Folks, this is Travis of Elston Equine Solutions, partnered with the Clopton Cow Company down here at the ranch. And today's topic for this episode is going to be talking about horned wraps go over top of a horn of a saddle. And we're not talking about uh, team roping or laying rubber. We're going to be talking about different types of mule hide and different types of leather. It goes right around the horn, this part right here. Uh, when you are, there's two different types of there are actually three different types of ropers out there. You got the hard and fast, which we have a video on. Uh, check it out on this channel. And then the second one is actually a lot of people put rubber around the horn. All right. And that's your team ropers. Well, the reason they do it is when they dally, they want traction. They don't want the rope to slip on the horn. If you're using mule skin or elk, elk hide or whatever, okay, it's going to look like this. It's wrapped right around the horn. And what you're going to do with long ropers like buckaroos and a lot of vaqueros, they're going to slip rope to slow critter down. Okay, so you want a little bit of slippage on it. That's what this is used for. So we're going to show you today how to apply it on a, a saddle. And yes, this is a swallow fork, uh, but I still like to use mule hide. I don't like to uh, do any type of roping other than using this. And that's just myself. Now, another side note is very important. Uh, a lot of team ropers will actually put mule hide over top of the horn for protection and then put the rubber right on top of it. And the reason they do that is, uh, is they don't want to destroy, just like us, uh, the buckaroo tradition doesn't want to ruin the leather on the horn. So they'll double protection with this and then they'll put the rubber on. Us buckaroos will put this on right over top for the same principle. Okay. Okay, so you might ask, well, why do you need to put, to put cover or a wrap around, whether it be rubber, mule hide, or elk hide, or boar hide, or whatever you want to use on top of this? Well, it's very expensive to replace this part, the neck of the horn here, okay? Uh, it's a lot easier to uh, replace this leather than take down the saddle shop get this replaced. It's normally a latigo leather or other type of uh, leather that saddle makers use. And once again, they got to take this all apart and it is cost you a lot. So it's better to be safe. Just buy something like this. Cost you some stores anywhere 15 to 30 bucks just for a roll of this. And that's why we do it protected. Because when the rope is going, it will start burning grooves right through this or through the rubber and get right to the meat of the good stuff that you don't want, which is the nice leather underneath protecting the wood horn, brass horn, or whatever type of metal horn you got underneath this leather right here. So speaking of horn wraps, there's a multitude of lengths out there. There's a multitude of widths out there, maybe wider than this. So you really got to look at your horn, decide which type you're going to use. They come in various colors. I've seen pink, I've seen purple, I've seen turquoise. I mean, they really dye these things to fit whatever needs that a cowgirl or a cowboy wants. I just generally stick to this traditional mule hide. And don't worry, folks, this is uh, not really made out of mule hide. They just call it that. It's just uh, cattle hide, okay? But it's traditionally been called mule hide for wrap. Now, if you come over and uh, follow me to this horse over here in my wade saddle, you'll see it's a different color than this one. All right, so this one is kind of an elk uh, wrap right here. You see it's been used, been dallied on. And it's fastened differently than what we're going to fasten today. It's off to the side and it's actually tacked underneath. And I'll flap, flip the saddle over later. You can see that they tack it underneath. You know, I'm not going to do that today on my demonstration, but I will show you. It's the same thing. The difference is they put the tacks when they're putting on a hide wrap underneath and they tack it in. Okay, but I'm going to show you a different technique. <music> So we've already talked about the different colors to be honored. These these are, I mean, there's just as many types of materials of leather you can use. Uh, boar hide, elk hide, mule hide, uh, whatever 
you want, it's out there. So just check it out and use what's best for you. People play with it and decide what they like. Just like I'm not going to tell you what type of vehicle to drive, what type of car to drive, or what manufacturer to buy from. I'm not going to tell you what type to use on your horn. That's an individual choice, and uh, that's up to you. You just play around and decide what works best for you, okay? And all comes down to feel. All right, folks, what we're going to talk about now is how to apply the mule wrap. Uh, you can see I'm next to a water trough. For reason being, I've already done it by taking this whole roll and thoroughly dunked this in the water trough and made it uh, very wet and very moist, you know, around the material. And then what I've done already is I've uh, just had it rolled up and sitting for an hour, but it is uh, pretty damp, but still kind of dry enough where uh, it's not sloppy wet like that. Uh, the reason being we're trying to get traction on it when we're laying it around the horn. And that's why we'll wet this. And we'll do the same thing with the used latigo. I use it to tighten this thing down. I'll also wet it and you'll see that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead over the saddle and I'll show you step number two. All right, so once I get this uh, moistened up and uh, very saturated, uh, it's feeling very wet, but dry it out for an hour where it's still kind of sticky. What I'm going to do is step number two, which is I'm going to round the base of uh, the mule hide. So you just use a pocket knife or extractor knife or carpenter's knife uh carpet knife or whatever and all i'm going to do is cut the corners off just round it nice and neat now you see this is pretty good leather i've already inspected it on both sides to make sure there wasn't no tears uh sometimes if you go down to a leather store uh they want to pre-manufacture strips like this they'll cut it out so you have to check to make sure there's no holes on both sides make sure there's no tears Make sure you got a pretty good piece of material, and I've done that already. So you can see I cut the base off. Now what I'm going to do is continue to round it a little bit to where I like it. There we go. Now it looks pretty good to me. Now what I'm going to do is kind of take it over to my saddle. And what I'm going to do is I am just going to see exactly where I want it for measurements. So I'm just going to take it right here. I like where it's at right there. Okay. I can take it through the gold of the seat if I want. And I can go with the roll because I got big open. Or what I could have done is just gone under the front of the fork. Come up through the back. Done the same thing. Remember, I'm just getting the measurements right now. Now, if I am a right-handed roper, which I am, I am going to go clockwise around the horn. So I'm going to start at the, the base. Wrap once, and I'm just going to overlay. And remember, I'm just getting my measurements. So I'm going to come over top just a little bit on top of the horn. Start working my way down. And it lays on pretty nice because I have it nice and wet. More. Now we're trying to do is get a nice V going from top to bottom so the rope kind of slips down to the base. And I am definitely going to use all this. And see how I got nice and fly here? I'm going to do the same thing when I actually put it on. Okay. I got a nice V down here, but it's laying on top of the swell of the fork flat. Because when you got your rope, you want a little bit on top of it because if it's not it's going to go right up and keep brushing it so i like that okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to wind it back up so i got my measurements now i didn't have to cut anything off okay now i'm going to go to the other side here remember this is the base now i'm going to make the pointy side I like to have a pointy side or make a pointy side for simple fact is it's easier to I'm going to take from corner to corner it's easier to draw it underneath there we go nice and neat like that so I got one base side which is base and then the pointy end so I can weave it through underneath this strap now remember I took a baseline over here See exactly where it's at. 
I'm gonna put my finger, if you can see on this side, got my thumb here. I know that's the middle of the horn. Okay, I'm gonna take it off, come up over here. And I'm just gonna keep it marked. Now I'm just gonna cut a, cut kind of like a circle around it. And if you got a hole punchers that are big enough for your saddle maker type, it's a lot easier to do this. There we go. Okay, now you see I got this nice big opening. I'm gonna see if it goes actually over top of the horn. Lay it in sideways and that'll work. Okay, so what we're gonna do is come around the bottom from north to south, underneath the fork swell, swing it over top of the horn. Lock it down in place like this. Remember, this is just one way. You can do this way around a buckle of a rope strap if you want. Okay, now I'm gonna bring it up, tighten it down. Now remember, if I'm right-handed, I'm gonna do this clockwise, wrapping around the horn. If I'm left-handed roper, I go counterclockwise, and I'm pulling tight every wrap. A little bit on the back of the horn here. Work my way back down. And remember, I'm going to create a V. Down. Okay, so we get the measurement right here. Come on, Travis. There we go. Wrap around the top. Down. Now remember, I'm creating that lip once again to have my rope. Go straight down. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is grab a, a fed or a screwdriver and I just go right underneath the whole piece of leather I had. If I had to split go all the way down here, I could just go through one side. I like it to go through just one. my pliers bring it through and bring out the bottom no different than you seen on that other saddle okay once I'm at this point I'm gonna tighten it with my hands clockwise because I'm right-handed Okay, what I'm going to do next is final, second to final step. This is an old uh, broken pooper scooper handle. Let's put a latigo on it, just screw it in. The old latigo is broken. We're going to wet this down to trough. We're going to come back over here and tighten this up, and you'll see that next. Okay, so I'm at the water trough. I'm just going to take this old latigo, drop it down inside, make sure it's wet. The only reason I'm doing this is getting traction. Okay, you can see there's a lot of water on there. Just kind of shake it because I just need it to be a little damp. That's it. 
Now I'm gonna come back over to the mule hide. So what I'm gonna do is just take my lad go, wrap it over top. Remember I'm doing clockwise. You come over here and I'm gonna use the stick as leverage and help tighten this up. You can see it's squishing down, tightening it up right there. See how it's rolling? And I'm gonna do the same thing down the bottom. Now that's getting pretty tight. You can see this is loosening it up right there. Where it should, and I pull through the bottom, and I got a nice tight mule hide wrap right here. That is tight, that's good. So that's the second and the final step that I do. If I want to take the excess, I can have to cut it down. I like to personally a little bit of the pigtail, and I just stick it down in the fork. Where it's just out of the way. Okay, like that. No biggie. That is solid. All right, the final step, what I like to do, once this dries up, we'll be on there really good, is I take a, a lariat or a catch rope or a picket string like I got here, and you all, all know when you're roping, okay? You catch something, you bring it down, you're just dallying, okay? So I'm just going to dally and pull what I'm doing, okay? All I'm doing is breaking it in, okay? Because I dally. Okay, I'll sometimes bring it sit this way. I slip rope, so I'm going to slip rope that way. All right, you're seeing some pretty darn good grooves getting in there now. Just for me doing it. Because remember, this is kind of wet. Tighten it down, but you can see my rope blades are starting to come down. I'm thick up here, but coming down the base where I want it, that V I was talking about. So that's what I like to do. Works good for me. There's a whole bunch of different ways of doing it, okay? But this is what works for me. Okay, I'm slipping rope out there. Okay. Yep, I'm really liking that. That was working good. All right, ladies and uh, gentlemen, that's kind of how you put one way of putting a mule hide on, uh, just making the slit. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is flip the other side so you can see the tack method. And uh, this is how you get it done. That's how you put mule hide on there. It's on there, I got no, nothing going on there. It's not slipping. All right, folks, so like I said, this is another method of doing it. You can uh, tack two nails instead of doing slit on top of the horn. And that is common, a lot of horns that are pretty good size and big. Like this one here, you can't really do that split, get over top. So that's one way, I'll show you the second way. Another way you could do it is do a slit and just put over top the buckle here, slide it down and then you can do the same thing and then cross under with the tail. Cause remember the base is right here, wrapped around the base of the buckle, okay? So like I said, it's just a few ways of doing it uh how to get the mule hide wrap on top of your stuff okay now you can see this was a single split went right through very nice and neat on this saddle okay they went in the halfway instead of the full remember i went through a full they went through a half so whatever way you want to cut it to get the friction you play with it decide what you want now one of your questions might be well how often do i need to redo the wrap well it's whenever you see holes or tears in there you can do two things. One, you can take the whole wrap off and then put a new one on. Or you could do like Dorrance Brothers. All they did is keep adding mule hide, strips of mule hide on top of it. Or pretty soon they just had a big, huge uh, stump right around the horn of nothing but mule hide. So it's up to you. It's all about feel, what you like and uh, what you don't like. And you just work with that. You have a solution whenever this comes up to you. Uh, shout out to Billy Jack and Jeannie from the Remount Foundation, a wonderful organization at the Air Force Academy Question Center. Uh, it's a great program that works with anybody who's got post-traumatic stress, PTSD, or TBI, which is traumatic brain injury. If you haven't checked out their organization, check it out online. Uh, their job is to save lives through the use of horses. What a wonderful program. So please check them out, and I'll put the link down at the bottom of my channel description. Please hit like, please hit subscribe. Until then, adios.
Thank mm-hmm. you.